Now, here is a machine that is very dear to my heart. And although I've done a full review on the Spectrum line of machines, I felt it was about time just to do an inspection, just to refresh our memories about how great this machine was. And it came in many forms. Here we have the later revised Spectrum 128K Plus model, which featured a true sound chip and 128K of memory, and it was a marvelous, marvelous machine. And here we have the slightly improved, I say improved, it's just a different case with a reset switch. But this is a Spectrum Plus, which featured the new keyboard, which was inspired by this, which we reviewed last week, the Sinclair QL. And behind it, you can see the Spectrum Plus 3 sitting nicely. And indeed, I even have a Spectrum Plus 2 in all its grey beauty. Now, of course, the Plus 3 and the Plus 2 were models made by Amstrad after he bought out the Sinclair name. And, you know, he did his traditional thing of putting a data recorder in this one and a floppy drive in that one, even though he did leave the tape counter off this model, which was quite hard if you were using a tape with multiple games on it. Inside we have a rip-off copy of Gremlins on both sides. A nice orange tape. Lovely job. But anyway, this is the one I want to look at today. As you can see, personal computer, Clive's name for the home micro. And on the side we have the 48K RAM edition. And on the back we have a brief setup guide showing you how to plug it into the TV, the cassette, the mains adapter and how to chuck your manuals on the side and have a remarkably large cassette handy to shove into the cassette player over here. So let's unpackage it shall we? Inside we get a poly insert with the words Sinclair written on the front. Uh, this one's been filled in with black marker for artistic effect and then inside this package we have the Sinclair ZX Spectrum with its rubber keyed glorificness. I've got the uh, rainbow stripe down the side to indicate that it is indeed a Spectrum with multiple colours. 15 colours, well, uh, 7 colours as it happens, with two shades of each and black, making a total of 15. Here's all the rubber keys with all their hundreds of commands on each one, which saved memory because rather than having to use a character for each command you could just store an entire command in one piece of memory one jobby whatever you want to call it bit it saved memory in any case and further in the box we have a sinclair spectrum introduction manual which is lovely and one of the early power supplies quite a few of these had to be returned as faulty as they overheated but this is a uh, ZX Spectrum Supply, there we go. So on the back of this little machine, uh, what do we have? We have a TV out RF socket, a mic and ear for the external tape player, a 9 volt DC and the edge expansion slot which goes straight onto the motherboard, the tiny tiny motherboard. So this machine, the first of the Sinclair Spectrum range, came out in April 1982 by mail order. Although it took some time to get fully accustomed into the lives and for Sinclair to actually start shipping them as they did with their products. They always took a while to get them out the door. So it wasn't until about 1983 when this thing was really all over the place and started to make impacts on lives in the home, especially children's lives and game playing lives. And of course to play games you need a tape player or you know a micro drive if you were fancy but most people had a tape player. You could get a bog standard WH Smiths one like this. It's a plastic silver effect. Or maybe you had a Matsui like this with colored buttons if you were a bit more upmarket. More upmarket still, you might have even had one of these Ferguson machines with all the level counters there. And look at it, it's got volume on the front on and off button, power switch up there, it's a beast. Oh, you might have had one like this, a Dixon's, D -d 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 Dixon's, Dixon's tape player in a lovely black colour to match your machine. 
you put it next to it, let's say it's actually bigger than the Spectrum itself. Now, of course, this thing relies on RF for connection, so you have to manually tune it in. But once you have, you are greeted with this copyright 1982 Sinclair Research Limited. A number of names Sinclair's companies went by, but this was one of the latter ones, and the name which most of the uh, Spectrum and Sinclair machines were released under. And you can press a button, and we are taken to cursor mode, and we have K which allows you to um, enter a particular variation on one of these keys. So if I press uh, J with load next to it, you'll see it puts load on the screen. We can also use symbol shift and press the J key and we get this instead, which is, you'll see, in the top right hand corner. Uh, we can use cap shift and we get lowercase j, and if we press cap shift we get uppercase j. And to access these various key commands we need various key combinations. So because we we were in keyword mode and we put load here, anything that follows load the spectrum knows will be in letter mode, so it has the L cursor. If we hold down cap shift and press 0 over there, we can delete all this, like so, and we have various other, so we're back into keyword mode now, and we have various other modes we can put it into. If we press the two shift buttons at the same time, so cap shift and shim symbol shift, there we go, the cursor has changed to an E and we're in extended mode. And then we can access extended functions. Uh, we can also have graphics mode, which is um, cap shift and nine. We get a G cursor. And then we can use the numeric keys at the top to display graphical symbols, which are useful for ASCII games and the like. And you can see on the keyboard itself, you know, all these options are available above the keys. It's quite a complicated layout, but with the manual you can work out how to get all the different key commands. There's no power switch on the Spectrum, so to power it on and off, you just literally take out the socket, the, the plug, plug it back in, and we boot back to the screen. Now, of course, the most familiar key to press was simply J to load. So to load the tape, you press J. And then you would need two quotation marks which are on the P key. You can see it there, and you can see there on the top right. So to get that, we need to use symbol shift and P, and P again, and then we get load double quotation marks. And this tells the Spectrum to load the first game or first program on the tape. So here's a suitable box of tapes. I think I will pick one of my favorite games from the time. Elevator action. So let's get this thing hooked up. You need one of these wires and this is two um, phono mono connections and they'll connect from the spectrum to the tape player for sending data to and from it. So it's very simple, we just connect the mic and ear sockets on the tape player there to the mic and ear sockets on the spectrum and there's no reverse labeling or anything it is just a case of connect mic to mic ear to ear and we also have to set the volume on the tape player to somewhere about midway this was always a contentious point you had to play around with the volume control to make sure that it wasn't receiving too strong a signal or too weak a signal and it was the result of many a failed game load after you'd waited five minutes for the damn thing to load up so, in we pop elevator action, rewind, we go back to the spectrum, we press J, and then we symbol shift and PP, and then we press enter. And now the spectrum is waiting for data. Press play on the tape, like so, and we have flashing borders on the spec here. That tells us that it's seeking or searching for a game. It can get, it's hearing a signal from the tape player. Probably quite a noisy hiss from this WH Smith's piece of equipment. And there we go. We are getting some data. And I'll leave you with a bit of elevator action. The keen-eared of you will notice that I've actually loaded this up on a 128k spectrum, hence the music. I'll do a quick play on this tomorrow so you can see it then, but until then, goodbye, thanks for watching.